Welcome back to A Quick Look. I'm Zoe Jewell, and today I'll be taking you through actresses who turned down some of the most iconic roles of all time. Genuinely, this list is going to shock you. Let's just jump right in to one that actually kind of blew my mind because I cannot picture anybody else in this role other than the actress who ended up playing the part. But Claire Danes was offered and turned down the role of Rose in Titanic, which, as we all know, ultimately went to Kate Winslet. Shocking for a number of reasons. One being, for those who know or don't know, Claire Danes starred in Romeo and Juliet with Leonardo DiCaprio prior to him then going on to, to star in Titanic. The reason Claire Danes turned down the role of Rose is because she had just finished filming with Leo doing Romeo and Juliet, and she didn't want to do a similar type of role. She was looking for something different um, after having done a tragic love story, Titanic, another tragic love story. So it's understandable why she didn't want to do that film or take on that story, but in hindsight, Obviously, it was a massively, massively huge film, made both Leo and Kate Winslet mega, mega stars and catapulted their, their careers going forward. I wonder if Claire regrets that decision. Also, apparently, allegedly, Gwyneth Paltrow also turned down the role of Rose in Titanic. But the idea of either one of them playing Rose, I can't, I can't quite wrap my mind around it because I only can picture Kate Winslet as Rose. Guess it was meant to be. Okay, moving on to the next on our list, which is Christina Applegate almost played the role of Elle Woods in Legally Blonde. Yes, the role that made Reese Witherspoon an absolute bona fide star was this close to not having gone to her. Allegedly, apparently, according to Christina, she turned down the role of Elle because she had just finished rap. She, she just wrapped on Married with Children and she was scared of, quote, repeating herself. In hindsight, again, I think she probably regrets that decision. But in the moment, at the time, one can understand why she, she didn't know, none of us probably knew at the time, what Legally Blonde would end up becoming and how iconic it would be and how people would be quoting it, talking about it for years and years and years and years to come. Applegate did come out and said that she regretted the, the choice. And she actually said, quote, what a stupid move that was. Hey, when you're an actor in Hollywood, you're going to take roles that you probably shouldn't take or shouldn't have taken. You're going to turn down roles that you probably should have taken. And then you're going to get the stuff that's meant for you. But I can understand her being upset about turning down Elle Woods because that, that is an iconic role. All right, next on our list, Molly Ringwald turned down the role of Vivian Ward in Pretty Woman, which went to obviously Julia Roberts. Um, Molly re revealed actually in a Reddit AMA almost or over a decade ago that she received the initial script for the film, but didn't pay much attention to it. And she just thought it was like, oh, okay. She actually wasn't really that interested in it and just sort of dismissed it and it moved along. Obviously then ended up in Julia Roberts' hands. She was amazing in the role, iconic. Obviously was a major part in making her the star that she is today. But what I find interesting is Molly doesn't seem to really regret the choice to pass on, on the role. She actually said, Julia Roberts is what makes that movie. It was her part. And I think that's a really interesting um, perspective to have on the situation because it's very easy to look at a movie that does well and you turn down that role and you think, oh my God, if I'd been in that part, like I could have had that success or it would have made that much money or et cetera, et cetera. But the truth is that sometimes the reason a film does well is because of the actor or the actress who's in the part. And maybe it wouldn't have done as well if it was somebody else. So I appreciate Molly's uh, ability to have a little bit of self-awareness and realize that what is meant for her went to her and what wasn't meant for her went to somebody else. Okay, this one shocked me for a number of reasons. 
And I'd be curious to know what you guys think, because apparently Beyonce was supposed to star in A Star Is Born, the latest remake that came out a handful of years ago, starring obviously Lady Gaga. Initially, before it went to Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga, before Bradley Cooper took on the director role, all that stuff, it was supposed to star Clint Eastwood and Beyonce, which I honestly can't quite wrap my head around that dynamic or how that was going to play out. Because if you know the story of A Star Is Born, a um, little hard to believe Clint Eastwood and Beyonce, but okay. Um, but then what ended up happening, at least with that version of the film, is Beyonce got pregnant. She then had to like delay. It kind of ended up changing hands. Obviously, they ended up getting to Bradley Cooper, Lady Gaga signed on. Now we have that film. And obviously that movie was a, me a mega success. Lady Gaga won an Oscar. It, I, it's hard to imagine anyone else in that role other than her. But the idea of Beyonce in that, in that role is interesting. And I would kind of like to see that movie um, because we, we know Beyonce's a good actress. She's been in a handful of movies over the course of her career. And I don't know, I think it would have been an interesting, an interesting performance and an interesting role for her. And I don't think they need to remake A Star Is Born again because it's been remade so many times. But I wouldn't have been mad if Beyonce was in that was in that movie and played that role. Okay, next on our list, another 90s classic that it's hard to imagine being starring anybody else. Sarah Michelle Gellar almost played the role of Cher in Clueless. Again, I cannot picture anybody else playing Cher other than Alicia Silverstone but it was almost a possibility. So apparently Sarah turned it down because of conflicts with her All My Children schedule. I feel like that's what happens so often with, with these actors is like another project gets in the way and prevents them from them being in like a massive, massively successful film. Um, but it's not all tragic for Sarah because she did end up uh, about a year later, I think, landing the role of Buffy in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which massive success. She was on that show for many, many, many years. So all's well that ends well. But Sarah Michelle Gellar as Cher, I could definitely see that happening. I could see that. Okay, next on the list, Anne Hathaway almost played Katherine Heigl's role in Knocked Up, which... Maybe Knocked Up's not as like classic of a movie as Illegally Blonde is or Clueless, but there's no denying that that role really kind of like, I felt like it made Katherine Heigl's movie career. And also that comedy is a, an all-time classic comedy that people will watch for decades and decades and decades. And apparently, um, apparently Anne Hathaway turned down the role because of the very up close and personal birth shot, birth scene that happens in the film. Um, and this is what this is what Anne Hathaway actually said. She told Allure magazine in 2012 as to why she turned it down. She said, I didn't disagree with the shot. My issue with it was that having not experienced motherhood myself, I didn't know how I was gonna feel on the other side about giving birth. Interesting reason to turn down the role, but I can definitely respect it. Um, went to Katherine Heigl. She did a great job, despite there being a little drama on the set following the, the film coming out and stuff. But Anne Hathaway and Seth Rogen together, maybe they should do a movie in the future because I kind of want to see that. All right, last but not least, Rachel McAdams turned down the role, speaking of Anne Hathaway, turned down the role of Andy Andrea in The Devil Wears Prada. That movie, I feel, this, I mean, Princess Diaries, I think, obviously made Anne Hathaway a movie star, but The Devil Wears Prada, like, took her up to the next level. That movie is so iconic, truly one of the best movies ever. 
and it almost went to none other than Rachel McAdams. Now I can very, very much see Rachel in that part, though I feel like it it's hard to it's hard to fully say because obviously all we know is Anne Hathaway in, in the role, but I feel like Anne Hathaway just does such a great job. And she she plays the like sort of um bookish nerdy non-fashion type very well and then she also plays like the high fashion version of herself very well too and i think rachel could do both but we haven't really seen her in a role where she's required to be kind of like bookish and nerdy um the reason that rachel apparently turned it down was because she had just finished mean girls as regina george and she was like looking for something different kind of wanted to like step out of that sort of um that type of role and was looking to do something different despite the fact that the studio really really wanted her to play that role um i also saw a number of other actresses who were apparently in contention for the role and then either turned it down or it didn't end up going to them but natalie portman kate hudson kirsten dunce and scarlett johansson were all considered for the role before it went to anne hathaway interesting Again, I think it was meant to go to Anne Hathaway, but all of those actresses are very talented and it would have been interesting to see their versions of the character. All right, guys, that is the list. Actresses who passed, who turned down some iconic roles. I would love to know in the comments what you think of these actresses turning down these roles. Would you have preferred to have seen the movie with any of the actors who turned it down? Did you prefer it the way that it ended up happening with the actual actors? Let me know in the comments, share all your thoughts, feelings, and concerns. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time.